Greetings and welcome to part 3 of our series on factors and multiples. In today's episode, we'll be looking at squares and cubes. And if you stay true to the end, Dr. Strange might just be teaching you a little magic trick. Let's first begin with a recap of what we've covered so far. In part 1, we've learned that prime numbers are numbers with exactly two factors, while composite numbers have three or more factors. We've also learned how to find the first 25 prime numbers using the sieve of Aristoteles, and how to use the ladder method to prime factorize a number and express the result in index notation. In part 2, we've learned that the highest common factor of two numbers is the largest positive integer that divides both numbers. We've also gone through the two steps of finding the HCF, which is to first prime factorize the numbers, then to select the lowest index of each prime. Similarly, we've learned that the lowest common multiple is the smallest positive integer that can be divided by both the two numbers. We've also gone through the two steps, which is similar to the steps for HCF, except that now we want the highest index of each prime. The success criteria for today would be for students to be able to first find the square root and cube root of numbers, two, to solve problems involving squares and cubes, and a special success criteria for today would be to be able to mentally cube root numbers in your head. Let's begin with the definition of square numbers, which are also known as perfect squares. These numbers are the product of some integer with itself. For example, 144 and 1764 are square numbers. An interesting fact about these numbers is that if you prime factorize these numbers, you can see that the indices of each prime factor is even. When square rooted, these numbers will give a nice whole number. Let's take the square root of 144. What we do is we divide the indices of each prime factor by 2. This gives us 2 square and 3, which multiplies together for 12. Similarly, for the square root of 1764, if we halve all the indices, we will get 2 times 3 times 7, which is 42. Moving on to checkpoint 1. Express these numbers as the product of prime factors and thereafter square root each number. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. For part A, the prime factorization gives us 2 squared times 3 to the power of 4. When we square root this, we will get 2 to the power of 2 divided by 2 times 3 to the power of 4 divided by 2, which is 18. For part B, the prime factorization is 5 squared times 7 squared, and when we square root it, we will divide the indices by 2 and this gives us 5 times 7, which is 35. For part C, the prime factorization is 2 to the power of 6 times 11 square. So when we square root this, we'll get 88. Moving on to cubic numbers, also known as perfect cubes. These are numbers which are the product of some integer by itself three times. For example, 1728 and 9261 are cubic numbers. Similarly, an interesting fact about these numbers is that if you prime factorize them, you will notice that the indices of each prime factor is a multiple of 3. When cube rooted, these numbers will give a nice whole number. Let's take the cube root of 1728. What we do is we divide the indices by 3. So this will give us 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 1, which is 12. Similarly, for the cube root of 9,261, we'll divide both indices by 3, and this will give us 3 times 7, which is 21. On to checkpoint 2. Express these numbers as the product of prime factors and thereafter cube root each number. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. For part A, the prime factorization gives us 2 cubed times 3 to the power of 6. When we cube root, we'll divide both the indices by 3, and this gives us 2 to the power of 1 times 3 squared, which is 18. 
For part B, the prime factorization is just 3 to the power of 9, so when we cube root the number, we'll get 3 cubed, which is 27. For part C, this, when prime factorized, will give us 2 to the power of 15, and when we cube root it, 15 divided by 3 is 5, so we'll get 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. Did you get all the answers? Let's now look at some problems involving squares and cubes. Problem number one. Find the smallest integer k such that 6048 divided by k is a square number, and separately, for part two, find another value of k such that 6048k is a cubic number. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. For this question, what we can first do is prime factorize 6048 using the ladder method. We will get 2 to the power of 5 times 3 cubed times 7. So we input that and divide it by k. And you'll see that to get a square number, we need to drop the index of each prime to the next smaller even number. So for example, 2 to the power of 5 will need to become 2 to the power of 4. Similarly, the powers of 3 and 7 must be 2 and 0 respectively. This must mean that k has to be 2 times 3 times 7, which is 42. We can also check the validity of this answer by testing the square roots with a calculator. And yep, it all checks out. Using the previous prime factorization, now we want a cubic number by multiplying k. So what we'll want to do now is to up the index of each prime to the next higher multiple of 3. So for example, 2 to the power of 5 will now become 2 to the power of 6. Similarly, for 3 and 7, 3 cubed will stay because it's already a multiple of 3, and 7 to the power of 1 needs to go up to 7 cubed. This must mean that k has to be the leftovers. k will need to have a 2 and a 7 square, so that will give us 98. We should also check this out with a calculator, and voila, it works out. Let's take a look at problem 2, an O-level question from the year 2016, Paper 1, Question 4. Part A. Express 784 as a product of its prime factors. Part B. Using your answer to Part A, explain why 784 is a perfect square. And Part C. Given that m and n are both prime numbers, find the values of m and n such that 784 times m over n is a perfect cube. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. For part A, when we prime factorize it, we'll get 2 to the power of 4 times 7 square. For part B, we note that our answer in part A that the indices of the prime factors are 4 and 2. Hence, it has to be a perfect square since the index of each prime factor is even. Lastly, for part C, we need to multiply a prime number m and divide by n to get a cube. So 2 to the power of 4 needs to go down to 2 cubed, and 7 squared needs to go up to 7 cubed, since we can only change the index of each prime factor by 1, and we still need to reach indices that are multiples of 3. That must mean that m has to be 7 and n has to be 2. Did you get the answers for these three parts? Now we've reached our bonus material on how to magically cube root a six-digit number in your head. Let me first outline how this trick plays out. First, we need a friend. Then we give him a calculator and ask them to key in a two-digit number and cube it. Once they read out the number, let's say 658,503, the magician will cube root the number and mentally get 87. How was this done? Pause the video here and try to reverse engineer the steps. And on to the grand review. First, we need to memorize the cubes from 1 to 9. So 1 cube is 1, 2 cube is 8, and so on till 9 cube is 729. Then, from the six-digit number, we throw away the last three digits and focus on 658. Notice that this is a number between 512 and 729. This tells us that the first digit must be 8. 
If it was 9, then this first three digits would be 729 plus. If it was 7, then it would be less than 512. Next, notice that the last digits are distinct for every cube. So since our last digit is 3, this must mean that the second digit is 7. Putting these two numbers together, we get the cube root to be 87. Now it's your turn. Give this trick a go. Pause the video here and try cube rooting these numbers in your head. You might also want to memorize the cube table first. Let's go through the answer. So here's the cube table. So for part A, you'll see that if we throw away the last three digits, the first number is 6. That must mean that the first digit is, is 1 since the number 6 is between 1 and 8. And the second digit, since the last digit is 9, it has to end with 9 as well. So this number is 19. So in part B, we throw away the last three digits, we'll get 103. And 103 is between 64 and 125, therefore the first digit is 4. And we look at the last digit, the last digit is 3, therefore it has to be second digit 7. So the cube root is 47. For part C, we see that if we throw away the last three digits, we get 314. That's between 216 and 343, so the first digit is 6. And since the last digit is 2, that must mean that the second digit is 8. So the answer is 68. Before we end, let's reflect on the success criteria that we have set out at the start of the lesson. Are you now able to square root and cube root numbers? Are you able to solve problems involving squares and cubes? Are you now also able to mentally cube root numbers? If you have any questions on this lesson, post them in the comment section below. We have come to the end on this chapter on factors and multiples. I will be making an extension Olympiad video on this chapter that will focus on Olympiad problems revolving around HCF and LCM as well as the Euclidean algorithm, but that is pretty much beyond the syllabus. But for the O-level series, this, the next episode will continue with the next chapter on real numbers and it will focus on the Botmus rule as well as the laws of arithmetic. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more math videos. Have a great day of learning.